I'm going to record this. Um, it says that the mass to bracket as shown in the figure is subjected to a pull of 600 newtons acting at 45 degrees to the horizontal axis. The bracket has a rectangular section whose depth is twice the thickness. Find the Cross section, cross sectional dimension of the bracket. If the permissible stress in the material of the bracket is limited to 60 megapascals. So, what is the permissible stress referring to? The allowable stress. It's the allowable stress. Okay, that's good. So, as a stress allowed in the material or the design stress in the material. Okay, so how do we determine the width and the thickness? And then we, we know that the depth of the material or the bracket is twice the thickness. Let us have a short prayer as we start. Father, we thank you as we go through this class. Be with us and help us to fully get what we need to have. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, we need to be able to uh, determine the cross-sectional area, okay? And then um, we also, because we need to obtain the section modulus of the material of the part, then we also have to resolve the force given to us. And the force given to us, we know that that is inclined to an angle of 45 degrees, okay? The vertical and horizontal. So if that is the case, uh, this force will have some bending to cause some bending stress of the material and we can determine the bending stress by resolving this force into each component so we'll have the horizontal component ph and the vertical component p v and if we're able to determine these two we can calculate for the bending uh, stresses in the material and we can also determine the, uh, because the thickness, the width of the material is in terms of the thickness, we can determine or have some equation that will solve to determine the thickness, which will help us determine the, um, uh, the, the, the width of the material, okay? So in this case, we have been given the force P. So let's say the force, which is 6,000 Newtons, let's represent that by P. So let's use P to represent the force. Okay, so we have P to be equal to 6,000 uh, 6, newtons, which is six kilonewtons, okay. Then um, we know that the allowable stress given to us is equal to 60 megapascals. We also know that uh, there is a thickness, let's use T to be equal to the thickness, which we don't know. We know that the width of the material or the depth of it, B, is equal to two times T. And this we also have to determine, okay? And um, 
we know that the cross section, the cross sectional area for this. So let's say the cross sectional area A is equal to um, B times T. Okay. But we know that the B is in terms of T. B is equal to 2T. So in that case, you can say that the area is equal to 2T square. Is that correct? And um, if the area is 2T square, uh, we can determine the session modulus for this particular arrangement. And the section modulus Z for a rectangular session is equal to, say, B H square on six, which is equal to, um, in this case, the H is representing the thickness, okay? So we have, the H is representing the B or the, the depth of the material, okay? That is the along the Y or the height, okay? So that is the general formula for section modulus for rectangular cross section. So we can say that in this case where we are using the height of the uh, cross section to be B, and then the width of it is T, we can say that the section modulus is equal to T times the B square divided by two. Uh, we know that B is in terms of T. So in effect, we are going to have this to be equal to T, in bracket 2t, all right, square divided by two. And when we simplify it further, we can say that, sorry, divided by six, not two. Um, so we have it divided by six by six. So, if we simplify it further, we can say that we are going to have a four T cube over six, which is basically um, two divided by three T cube. Is that correct? Please, I need your response, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. Good. Then uh, let's resolve this um, force. So now that we have this, let's say that this P, if we are resolving it, P H, the horizontal component, will be equal to the P, okay? It will be P what? Cos 45. So the horizontal component is going to be uh, 6,000, uh, 6,000 Newtons cause 45 degrees. So, uh, Thank you, what we please, have, isn't the sign bit? Is that? Isn't the, the horizontal component. Uh-huh. Um, uh, isn't it sign, I think 6,000 cause a uh, sign 45? Well, sum 45 cos 45. Okay, the same. Yeah, the same. Yeah. 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 So if we have this component here, all right, this component, which is that this angle is the same as that angle. Okay. So if we pick it that way, you can say that if 45 is here, this is also 45. So if you want to find this component, is this cos 45? Are you okay? If we are using this side, it will be sine but it's the same as the cost. Okay. All right, so you let's make it the way that you, so let's make it sign. So
So let's say sine 45. And when you calculate this, what do you get? Ah. Uh, Four two four two point six four. So we have four two four two point six four newtons. The vertical component P V the same thing. So here we also are also going to have the vertical component of the force to be equal to 6,000 cos 45, which will be the same value for 42.64 newtons. Okay, so uh, now we have this expressions here, A. So we have this expression. Let me move my board away a bit. So now we can determine the bending moment due to the horizontal component of the load. Okay, so let's say that we represent that by MH. And that bending moment, if you look at the diagram, if you look at the diagram here, you will see that uh, we have the force acting at the center point here. And the horizontal component, pH, is having a perpendicular distance of 75 to the center of the bar. And if we want to find the bending moment that is with respect to this force, then we can see that the bending moment is equal to the force, okay, the horizontal component times the, the perpendicular distance up to that point there. And that will be equal to uh, pH. So the bending moment will be equal to pH times the 75, we can convert it to meters. So we have 0. 0 0.075, which is equal to 4242.64 times 0 0.075. What answer do you have for this? 318.5. One nine eight. One nine eight. Newton meters. Always remember to put the the unit. <clears throat> then uh, we can also determine the bending moment as a result of the. Um, use is that, Hello, who is ah. talking? You say what? Man, they have to make the inquiry. They don't. They don't talk to. They no go do. Hello. Are you okay?
All right, so let's determine what is the bending moment with respect to the vertical component. And the vertical component, again, if we look at the diagram, is making the distance from the neck of the uh, bracket, okay? The distance from the neck of the bracket to the point where the load is acting is 130 millimeters. So again, we can have the bending moment for the vertical component. So we have MV to be equal to PV times 0 0.130. Okay, so um, in effect, we have 42.64 times 0 0.13. And this will also give us what value? What do you have for that? 51, the 551.543 Newton meters. 551.543. 543. 543. Newton meters. Newton meters, okay. So we have that. So these are the uh, two bending moments that are uh, resulting from the horizontal, okay, and then the vertical component of the force given to us. Now, um, these um, things we have determined, these forces we have determined, they will produce direct stresses in the member. Okay, so we are going to have a direct stress produced by these forces in the member. And then we also have <laughs> some bending stresses produced by this in the member, okay? So if you look at the uh, component, if we take the horizontal component, for instance, you see that this horizontal component, um, if it's acting on the member, there will be some stress that it will induce in the member along the axis of the member. Then the, if we take the horizontal component to, it will also produce some stress in the member. So let's take them one after the other. Hello, sir. Hello, talk. Um, please, uh, the way we calculated for the bending as a result of uh, the vertical component of the force. Yes, uh, the, question, the question didn't indicate uh, the section that we are looking at passing along the length. Did it indicate which part we are looking at? So uh, uh, if it is silent on it, is it always like the last end of it that you consider? Yeah, so in this case, we have to determine the cross section. And we did not, the question did not indicate at which point this section should be determined. So usually in such a scenario, you have to determine um, the, the parameters of the component based on where we have the maximum stresses occurring, okay? So if you look at this diagram here, you will see that uh, all things being equal, the maximum stress in this member is going to occur at the neck region. Well, that is where we are going to have the maximum bending moment occurring. Okay. Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes. So in that case, that is where we will determine. You cannot determine it anywhere here. Well, if you take a session along this part, we can determine stresses there. Along here, we can determine some stresses there. Okay. Just like the example we saw the other time where we are to determine stress at some point in the member, where a section has been taken, a distance has been given from 
where the load is acting to that area where we have to determine the stresses. In this case, nothing like that has been given. So you have to determine the parameters based on where the maximum stress is going to take place. Are you okay? Yes, sir. All right. So um, over here, Is that? So over here, we are going to have some stresses due to the horizontal component and the vertical component. And you will see that if we have the uh, horizontal component acting in this direction, it will produce some bending about the axis, which we have determined. And that bending will bring about some bending stress. And again, if we take the uh, vertical component, it's also producing some bending about the same session. And we also have um, a bending stress due to that. Also, when we take the horizontal component, due to the direction at which it's, it's acting, okay, we are also going to have direct stress induced in this section of the member. If you take resultant uh, forces on this, you will see that there will be a reaction at the neck here, which will be acting in the opposite direction. And the effect of that will be equal to, or the force, that force will be equal to the horizontal component force that we have here. All right, so when, we um, are, we have to determine the direct stress in the in this section of the member as a result of uh, the horizontal component pH. Please give me a minute. I'll be with you soon.
Hello. Are you on? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sorry for taking some of your time. Okay, so let's continue. So we we'll realize that uh, when you look at it, the there will be bending stress, okay, caused by the vertical component about the neck. Then there will also be bending stress as a result of the um, horizontal component about that same area. But you realize that the horizontal component will also cause some tensile direct stress at the area, okay, because it's pulling in that direction. So there'll be some tensile stress produced by the horizontal component at the neck region. We need to determine all these uh, stresses. Then when we determine that, we need to add them up and then equate it to the uh, allowable stress that have been given to us, okay? So let's take them one by one. Now we, let's take the, the stress produced by the, so let's take, um, say the horizontal component first. So let's say uh, we are looking at the horizontal component, okay? So for the horizontal component, we, we have been able to determine the bending moment for the horizontal component. Now let's determine the stress due to the, uh, the bending moment, okay? And then also the direct stress as a result of the uh, horizontal component. So the direct stress, we know that the uh, sigma, uh, let's say that sigma not the direct stress for the horizontal component is equal to the force pH divided by A. And uh, we know the pH value, the horizontal component of the force, we have calculated it to be equal to um, 42.64. 4, and the A value is what? What is the A? The A in terms of uh, T, we determine A in terms of T to be equal to three divided by two over three. Okay, so we have that here, two over three times A, uh, two over three times T, um, what, T cube, okay? So in that case, we are going to have it in the denominator. So we're going to have, um, uh, say, let's say that we have two over three T cube. And this, we can rewrite it to be equal to three times Sir. two. Yes. Sir. Go on. The, the area is two T squared. This is the sectional modulus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The area is 2t square, right? The area is 2t square. Let's confirm that. So we have the area to be 2t square. That's good. Thank you. So in that case, we have 2t square to be equal to, so this will be equal to, what do you have for that? If you simplify. Uh, you should have two, one, two, one point three, two, divided by T square. Is that correct? Now let's find the bending moment due to the 
um, horizontal components of the force. Sorry, the bending stress due to the horizontal components of the force. So the bending stress, where which is um, we know it to be sigma b h will be equal to um, the bending moment due to horizontal component divided by the session modulus. And that will give us, we have the bending moment to be equal to what? So the bending moment we're having um, 318.198. So we have 318.198. So the session modulus now is the um, two on three T cube. Okay, which we can say that is equal to three times 318.198 divided by 2T cubed. Um, if you simplify this, what do you get? Uh, what do you have? Four seven seven point two nine seven. Four seven seven point two nine seven over T cube. Over T cube. All right, let's go on. So now let's look at the other one. Let's look at the um, horizontal, the vertical component. Let's look at the vertical component. And these uh, stresses we have determined here, you realize that if you look at the diagram, there will be in tension, there will be tensile stresses about the top section, okay? Uh, this horizontal component of the force will try to bend it about that section over there, okay? So in effect, it's going to subject that area into tension. The other side will be in compression. The, direct stress component as a result of the horizontal force will also be tensor. It will be stretching it, so it's tensor. All right, so these two stresses are both tensor uh, stresses. Agree? Mm -hmm. Is that? No. Okay. Who said no? Yes. What's your objection? No, 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 no. What? No, 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 no. I can't hear you well. No, 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 no. Can you hear what he's saying? Hello? No, sir, we can't hear. Okay. I can't hear, so you can type your question. Eh? All right, so let's look at the, the vertical component. <clears throat> the vertical component, if we are taking the neck region where the maximum stress should be occurring, 
you realize that the vertical component will not have a direct stress component, but it will just be bending stress at the neck. Okay. So what we have to do is to determine that uh, bending stress value. So let's take that one. So we say that um, Let me go this side. So we have the uh, vertical component. So for the vertical component, we have the bending stress. Okay, so we have sigma the vertical is equal to mv divided by the session modulus and the mv we have determined it to be equal to what value um okay we have it to be 551.543 <clears throat> Five five one point. Sorry, and five four three divided by two on three t cube. So again, we can say that we have three times five five one point five four three. Um, over two T cube. What answer do you have for this? Eight two seven point three one five. What? Eight two seven point three one five. Eight two seven point three one five. Three one five. <laughs> All over T Q. Over T Q. Q. Okay. All right. So, um, of course, this uh, values that we are having <clears throat> will be in what? What to be the unit? Assuming we know T to be in meters. Uh, Newton per meter squared. Newton per square meters Newton. or Pascals, okay. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so we have this. Now, this uh, stress that we are having here, will it be a tensile stress or it will be a compressive stress? <clears throat> if we are picking it from determining the stress from the top layer, it's going to be tensile, okay? But the bottom layer is going to be compressive. But they are the same, only that one is compressive, one is tensile. So now we need to add up all the stresses we have obtained because we are looking at all of them with respect to one session, say the top session of it. And if that is the case, it's subjecting the member to compression, compression, sorry, tens tension, tension, tension. And we need to add all of them up. And when you add them up, it should be equal to the allowable stress given for the material. If it's equal to it, then we can say that the design is safe, okay? So let's pick them one by one. 
So at the top, we have uh, three different stresses that we are going to consider. Two due to the horizontal component and one due to the vertical component. So let's pick them. So the first one, um, <clears throat> the stress sigma is equal to, so now we have sigma B H, okay, plus sigma not H plus sigma B V. So these are the three components of the stresses. So the first one uh, is what we have two, one, two, one. Okay, that is this one here. That is this one. So two, one, two, one. Then the next one, BH is that. So we have B not and then uh, sigma not H, sigma BH. Then the, we have been also we have been able, able to determine the other one too here. So let's write them down. So we have two, one, two, one, point three two divided by um say t square. <clears throat> well, let me put this one first. So we have <laughs> Sigma BH to be four seven seven point two nine seven T cube Sorry. So we have um, two one two one point three two divided by t square plus eight two seven point three one five divided by t cube. <laughs> Now, for the design to be satisfactory, we say that this stress build up in the material, okay, should be less than or equal to the allowable stress given. So, for the satisfactory design, uh, we say that the, <clears throat> the stress component is the permissible stress is equal to this one here. So what we can do is to equate all this to 60. But before that, let's uh, uh, simplify. Okay, let's simplify this one. When you simplify, what do we get? We have uh, this value over T cube. So this over T cube, we can add the two. And then this over T square. What do we get for that? Uh, four seven seven point two nine seven plus eight two seven point three one five is what one three zero four point six one two one three zero four point six one two six one two over T cube, T cube plus two one two one point three two over T square. So since we have the permissible stress to be equal to 60 megapascals, we need to equate all this expression we have here to 60 megapascals, okay? So this is equal to 60 megapascals. So let's um, 
write it in full. So times 10 exponent 6. Now, having obtained this one, we can solve for t. This is just a cubic equation. So let's make, <clears throat> let's um, uh, simplify this uh, equation that we have here. So we have, um, we have t, uh, this value over t cube plus this over t square equals this over what? So um, it's got 60 times 10 exponent, exponent six, okay? So if we want to say lessen the effect of the, let's say that we can divide true by this value. Let's try to write the equation in a, a different format. Um, <clears throat> how do we rearrange it? So that you can just put it in the calculator then to get the answers. So let's yeah, okay. multiply true by TQ. So if we do that, we are going to have 1304.612. Plus, this one will be what? We are going to have here to be 21. Two one point three two T equals um sixty ten exponent six T Q. So if you rearrange that, we have <clears throat> if we rearrange that, we can say that we have sixty times 10 exponent six T cube minus um, 2121.32 T minus 1304.612 is equal to zero. So this uh, cubic equation without the, the the quadratic term is missing, which is exponent. So you can just input this into the calculator and the coefficient for the coefficient for the So the coefficient for the t square is zero. What do you get for that when you punch this in the calculator? Zero point zero two eight three. So you have t to be equal to zero point zero two eight three. Is that correct? Uh, meters. Okay, that is meters. Okay. And this we can say that is <clears throat> equal to 28, 28 28.2 meters, uh, millimeters. Okay. 28.3 millimeters as the thickness. And uh, from this, we can determine the B. We know that B is equal to 2T. So the B now will be 2 times 28.3, which is equal to what value? Uh, 56, right? 
point six six. Okay, so if we have these parameters for that uh, bracket, then we can say that it's safe. All right, and if we put these parameters, that means that based on the loading in the bracket, the stress induced in the bracket will not exceed the allowable stress for that bracket. Are we okay? Hello? Hello? Hi, sir. Any question? Any question? Okay, so um, we still have some time. Let's quickly uh, wind up everything and look at the final session in the handouts. Okay, so can you see uh, the screen? So we're looking at theories of failure. <clears throat> theories of failure. So the strength of a machine member is based upon the mechanical properties of the material used. Okay. And since um, these properties are usually determined from simple tension or compressive test, therefore predicting failure in members subjected to unisia stress um, is both simple and straightforward. But predicting failure, failure stresses for members subjected to biasia or triasial stresses uh, is much more complicated. Um, in <clears throat> let's say biasia cases where we have a member with loads acting on it. Okay, what we are we are we, we've been looking at it now. We are looking at it in the way that the loads that are applied are applied in only one plane, okay? If they are applied in only one plane, so let's say X, Y plane. But in the cases where you have loads applied in different planes in the member, you have different stresses that will be developed through the, the member and um, the determination of this stress becomes um, more complicated. For Bayesia and Triasia states of stress, of stress is a large number of theories have been formulated. And we are going to discuss four of which are used um, in most cases, okay? And the purpose of these theories of failure is to predict what combination of principal stresses would result, will result in failure. So what combination of stresses will uh, bring or about failure in the member. Uh, so um, this failure theory, what do they seek to postulate? This theory seeks to establish why a material subjected to given stress conditions fail by, by stating specific limiting effects which are responsible for failure. The limiting effects are called criteria. Okay, so a failure theory seeks to establish criteria to explain why materials subjected to 
given conditions fail. And some of these criteria are the maximum uh, normal stress. You have the maximum normal stress theory, also known as the Rankine theory. And the maximum shear stress theory, also known as the Gust and Dreska theory. We also have the maximum distortion energy theory, uh, the Henke and Vermeer's theory, and the, the Coulomb Moore theory, which is mainly for brittle materials. Okay, so combined state of stress by easier triesial theories of failure, we have equivalent Tunisia state of stress. So it's like um, we combine this by easier or triesial stresses, okay? Through this theory of failure, we are able to approximate them to an equivalent Tunisia state of stress to make the, um, the, the solution simple, okay, to solve. The maximum normal stress theory, that's the first one we are looking at. And it states that failure or yielding occurs at a point in the member if the maximum number stress exceeds a limiting value in simple tension test. <clears throat> failure or yielding occurs at a point in the material in the member if the maximum number stress exceeds a limiting value in simple tension test. That is the maximum number stress theory. And we have this equation for that. So here we have maximum number of stress is equal to <clears throat> one on two. So we have stress in Y and a stress in X and in Y plus one on two square root of stress in the Y direct, X direction and Y direction, okay, minus Y direction square plus four tau. And then the tau is the shear stress in the XY plane. When material is failing, the maximum number stress is equal to the equivalent number stress, which uh, the equivalent number stress um, <clears throat> will now be therefore equal to that equation that we are having up there. Uh, for special case scenarios, a shaft in bending and torsion for special case scenario, the X component of the stress is equal to the bending stress, okay? And then the Y component of the stress is zero. And if that is the case, this um, whole equation can be simplified to obtain this one, okay? So if the Y component is zero, and then we only have stress in the X, we only have stress in the X direction and the X stress is equal to the bending stress in the member, then we can have the equation to be <clears throat> like this one. Okay, so for the maximum number of stress theory, um, we can say that these are the equation that you should look out for. And then in general, this theory is applicable to brittle material in final rupture. Okay, so if <clears throat> we are dealing with brittle material, then we can say that the equivalent stress, which is equal to the maximum stress in the material, is equal to the ultimate stress in the material, sigma u. Then the criteria for failure is that the equivalent stress is greater than the ultimate stress. Okay, if the um, equivalent stress becomes greater than the ultimate stress, then failure will occur. Okay, but in case we introduce a factor of safety where we want the uh, uh, member to operate, okay, the stress is to be below the ultimate stress in order to prevent failure, then we can uh, bring some factor of safety into play here. And we know that the factor of safety which is serving as a safe margin is to help us to somehow over design the, uh, the, the member, okay? So that in case the operating uh, condition of the <clears throat> member is not, uh, let me say that it, it, the member is, uh, is not being 
used in accordance with the condition at which it should operate. Even if there is overloading, it will still be able to survive because of that safe margin provided, okay? So in that case, if factor of safety is introduced, then we can have the equivalent stress to be less than or equal to the allowable stress. <clears throat> okay, so, and the allowable stress in this case is, of course, the ultimate uh, stress in the material divided by the factor of safety. <laughs> Any question? <clears throat> Okay. Now the maximum shear stress theory, it states that failure or yielding occurs at a point in the member when the maximum shear stress reaches a value equal to the shear stress at the yield point in a simple tension test. So this is the maximum shear stress formula. A failure or yielding occurs at a point in a member when the maximum sh shear stress reaches a value equal to the shear stress at yield point in the simple tension test. And that's the formula for the maximum shear stress theory. The maximum shear stress is equal to one on two square root of sigma x minus sigma y square plus four tau xy square material is failing tau maximum <clears throat> the maximum uh, stress is shear stress is uh, equal to the uh, half of the equivalent shear stress which um, means that half the equivalent shear stress is equal to the maximum shear stress which is equal to the stress the shear stress in the y but the shear stress in y is equal to sigma y on two, half of the direct stress in the y, that is a shear stress in the y direction. So shear stress at yielding is half the yield stress in tension. Note that, so shear stress at yielding is half the yield stress <coughs> in tension. When failing, the equivalent stress is equal to this one. And for special cases, we have the equivalent stress to be equal to two times the maximum shear stress. And that special case is where we have bending and torsion occurring in the member, okay? So in that case, we can say that the <clears throat> equivalent stress is equal to square root of sigma b squared plus uh, for uh, tau xy. The theory is applicable to ductile material in yielding. So you can look at the two. We have the maximum uh, number stress theory and the maximum shear stress theory. Maximum number stress theory for brittle materials and then the maximum shear stress theory for the <clears throat> ductile material and when we introduce factor of safety so that the component can operate within the safe margin we have the uh, maximum shear stress to be equal to uh, sigma y over two uh, should be less or equal to sigma y over two s or two times the factor of safety <clears throat> or the equivalent stress is equal to sigma y over s or the direct stress divided by the factor of safety. And the following is also a design criteria for the um, maximum shear stress, okay? So here we have this matrix to be less or equal to sigma y over s. And the maximum distortion energy theory, it states that 
failure or yielding occurs at the point in the member when the distortion strain energy or shear strain energy per unit volume reaches the distortion energy per unit volume at yield point as determined from a simple tension test. Distortion energy is the difference between strain energy and then the strain energy due to a uniform stress. So the uh, maximum, the, the distortion, maximum distortion energy theory is equal to what we have here. So we have one plus the Poisson ratio. I know what I believe you know what the Poisson ratio is divided by three times the uh, modulus of elasticity, right? In bracket, we have sigma x squared plus sigma y squared minus sigma xy plus three tau xy squared. And then we can also say that it's equal to this expression, one plus Poisson ratio divided by three e in bracket the equivalent stress square of the equivalent normal stress. When the material, um, <clears throat> the material is failing, both expressions are equal. That is, we have this one here <clears throat> is equal to um, that, okay? So in that case, we can say that the equivalent stress is equal to this um, expression here. This theory is applicable to ductile material and yielding, especially when it comes to fatigue fracture. So we have fatigue fracture or fatigue failure occurring. We could use the distortion energy theory. And um, <clears throat> we can also say that the equivalent stress is equal to the sigma why the factor, a factor of safety, if we introduce factor of safety, then equivalent stress should be equal to sigma y over s. Okay, the design criteria is the equivalent stress is less or equal to sigma y on s, or this other one here. Okay, so um, uh, we, we, we look at this one, it says that a stress at the point in the body, uh, the stresses at the point in the body are, and they have been listed. So we have um, sigma x is equal to this, sigma y is that, tau xy is this. Yield point stress is equal to this mega newton per meter square. And find the factor of safety. Okay, so here you have to find a factor of safety one by the maximum normal stress theory, and two, the maximum shear stress theory, and three, by the distortion energy theory. Okay, so we have maximum normal stress, maximum shear stress and the distortion energy theory. And we have to determine the factor of safety. So remember, over here we have the X, the sigma X value to be this, sigma Y to be that, tau XY, we have that value. And the yield point stress is giving us this one. So if you know the yield point stress, and then we know all the stresses in X and Y, the shear stress to we know it. Uh, what is the factor of safety based on the maximum number stress theory? So let's go to the maximum number uh, stress theory. <clears throat> okay, so but per the maximum number uh, stress theory. We know that the equivalent stress, okay? We know that the equivalent stress is equal to this equation here. Are you following? Hello? So we are following. Okay, so if you have the equivalent stress to be equal to this, 
formula. Um, what is the equivalent stress? We can determine it, right? And the yield point stress is the ultimate stress in the material. And we know that equivalent stress is less or equal to yield point stress divided by what? Factor of safety. So if we know the equivalent stress, which we can calculate based on the information given, and then we also know the yield point stress, which is the ultimate stress in the material, then what would be the factor of safety? So we can say the factor of safety is basically equal to the sigma u, okay, the yield point stress, the ultimate stress in the material, divided by the equivalent stress. Are we okay? So that one, <clears throat> We can calculate for the factor of safety based on that. If you take the maximum shear stress theory also, you know that for the maximum shear stress theory, we have the tau maximum to be equal to this. And uh, we know that uh, when failure is occurring, when failure is occurring, uh, we have the, um, it says here that when failure is occurring, when material is failing, the tau maximum is equal to half times the equivalent stress. And equivalent stress, we know the formula for the equivalent stress. But then if we are to determine the factor of safety, we look at the relation between the factor of safety and then the maximum shear stress. And here we say that the maximum shear stress is equal to the sigma y over two times the factor of safety. Okay, or the equivalent stress is equal to sigma y over s. So if you want the factor of safety based on this, you can say that the uh, we can first of all calculate the equivalent stress or we can calculate the maximum shear stress. And we calculate the maximum shear stress, we come to uh, this um, formula. The maximum shear stress equals sigma y over 2s. So from here, we can say that the s, which is the unknown, sigma y, we have it already. This one, we can calculate it based on the formula. So we can determine the s, which is the unknown, that equation, okay, which is a factor of safety. Then the, the maximum distortion energy theory, also similar. Okay, so first of all, we know the equivalent stress for that to be equal to this one here, okay? And uh, we know that all this information have been given, sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy have been given. So the only unknown here is going to be the uh, or the factor of safety. So when we calculate the equivalent stress, which is equal to sigma y divided by s, the s which is unknown, we can determine it. We factor the value for sigma y and the equivalent stress here. Then we can determine the factor of safety based on the distortion energy theory. Any question? Uh, any question? Any question? Okay, so um, Sir, please. What, 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 the last chapter be part of the quiz? What? The last chapter, the one that you just, you just thought, will it be part of the quiz? Of course, everything though. Why are you asking? Who said? Thing, though, like, you're okay. <laughs> Why? Confusing. It's confusing. Which part is confusing? I'm asking you, do you have a question? What is confusing? You ask. Uh, you can say it's confusing. 
a lot of formulas. Mm, too much equation. <laughs> or the equation, that one, they, they have to be there. It's part of mechanical engineering and design. You can't avoid them. <laughs> yeah. mm. And this are not the last time you're going to use equation. You will see some of the repeating as you go on. Machine design two, you have equations there, many of them. Three, there are a lot of equations. So that one is part of it. But you may not have really, but there are some simple things that you should know, okay? And the simple expressions that you should know. Uh, but I hope the explanation I gave for the example given, you are okay with it. Just ensure that you solve it, go through and you said can you please go over the example okay if you look at this one we have to determine factor of safety based on the uh these three failure criteria okay so this criteria we have the maximum number stress theory maximum share stress theory and distortion energy theory and uh, if we take the uh, distortion energy theory, for instance, um, this is the formula that the maximum distortion energy is equal to that one, okay? I will say that equivalent stress for the distortion energy theory is equal to this. Are you okay? And we have in the distortion energy theory that if you want to introduce factor of safety, the equivalent stress in distortion energy theory is equal to sigma y over s, okay? If you look at the expression for the equivalent stress, we have sigma x, sigma y, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y. Are you okay? All this information have been given in the equation. Sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y have been given. So we have sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y. We have it, okay? And um, because of that, we can calculate for the equivalent stress. So you will have the value for the equivalent stress. Then we know that equivalent stress is equal to sigma y over s. What is sigma y? We also have it here in the equation, okay? So if we put the sigma y here, the only unknown is what? Is which one? S. So we can make X, X, S the subject and then we calculate for the S. Then that will be the factor of safety with respect to the distortion energy theory. Are you okay? Don't ask the question, are you okay? Uh -huh. yes, sir. All right, so in that order, so you if you pick the number, maximum number share story is similar. Maximum share stress theory is similar thing that you do. Okay. All right. Okay, so we are going to end. Thank you very much uh, for your time. God willing, when we meet after the quiz tomorrow, we'll We'll talk about the exams, the format, how it's going to be like. But um, you will have to read and also watch the videos, okay? I think the online classes, most of you have not been taking part of it. So inform your colleagues that they should watch the videos. I'll post this one and the last one, the last class too, on the, I, will, I will send a link to the VLA so you can get access to it and you watch them. I believe you've all submitted your assignments. Um, thank you. And if there is, there is no other question, we'll end here. Thank you for coming. God bless you and have a nice time. Yes. What about it? Say the chapter. Say we beg. Say the chapters are many, please. 
Um, what, why are they many? What, what do you mean by they are many? Say, like from chapter 48. Uh, don't worry, it's going to be simple. Yes, read, eh? go through everything. If you understand okay. the concept, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So revise all that we have done. Look at them. Go through them. So is the quiz going to be OBJ or uh, written? I think uh, I'll I'll mix them up. Okay. So you have some calculations here, some OBJ, some true or false feeling. Mix up. How hard do you want it to be? Uh -huh. want OBJ. Why do you want OBJ? Because that's it's simple. Why do you want simple things? Uh -huh. Mr. Please, um, um, how many are the calculation questions? For which one? Are you talking about the exams or the uh, the quiz, hey, the quiz. <clears throat> no, don't worry. Just learn. By right, tomorrow, we'll determine that. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. God bless you.